Okay, let's talk about how to deal with this worksheet here, about how ionic naming rules work. So we'll talk about this. I'm not going to write out all the answers. I'm just going to talk about them to so make sure you're listening. The uh, first one, which type of elements bind in order to make ionic formulas? That is metals and nonmetals. Remember, metals are anything on the left side of the staircase that separates the metals and nonmetals. Nonmetals are over here on the right. Metals are over here on the left. All right, so explain how to find the formula. If you have an element, you need to figure out its charge. Here I'm being easy on you and giving you the charge already done. If you don't know the charge, like if it doesn't tell you, you have to figure out that this is plus one, plus two, plus three, minus three, minus two, minus one, and zero. Anyway, if once you figure out the charge of an element, remember how you switch the charges. That means bring this three down here, bring this two down here. Forget the pluses and minuses, they don't matter. Oops, that's meant to be a two. And then, so that's two aluminums, three sulfurs, so two aluminums, and, oh my goodness, I accidentally wrote the wrong thing. All right, one gets the idea. That there's a sulfur and three of them. All right, anyway, same thing here. One of these, three of these. That gives a formula with three sodiums and one nitrogen. And remember, don't write the N. Uh, let's see, if you have these com this combination of things, you're going to need two of these and two of these. So for SR2O2, which reduces down to, because that's a 2 to 2 ratio, that becomes a 1 to 1 ratio. So that's SRO as your final answer. So anyway, having mentioned that, once you figure out how to get a formula with uh, switching the charges, the next thing you got to do is consider these Roman numeral business. What do the known Roman numerals and chemical names such as iron 3 carbonate represent? Yes, that's pronounced iron 3 carbonate. The Roman numeral tells you the charge of the iron. So that's what you write here, that this represents the charge of the iron. Are the Roman numerals used in chemical names? Yes, they are. This is an example of a chemical name. So your answer is yes. Roman numerals are in chemical names. Not some, or not all, but some, yes. Are they in chemical formulas? An example of a chemical formula is this, or this, or this. The answer is no, never. Roman numerals are never, ever in a chemical formula. There's no exceptions to that for this level of, the, of chemistry. Um, are Roman numerals used for metals or nonmetals? The answer is metals only. More specifically, Roman, yes, these metals that are colored here are what Roman numerals are used for. So outside of these, never use a Roman numeral for a nonmetal, such as that, or that, or one of these, or... And there's certain metals that you don't use the Roman numeral for here either. But before we do that, just to mention, the family of elements that generally needs a Roman numeral, most of these transition metals need a Roman numeral. Which is to say any compound containing this or this or this or this or this or whatever, if it contains it, you need a Roman numeral to specify what the charge is of the cation. So that's the answer here, transition metals. Explain that groups 1 and 2 never need Roman numerals because they have constant charge that does not vary. Unlike these, which do not have a constant charge. This can be a plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus whatever. Same is true for that one, 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 whatever. They can have more than one possible charge. Whereas group 1 right here and group 2 right here can have multiple different... Sorry, they never have different charges. These are always a plus 2 no matter what. These are always a plus one no matter what, unlike this, which could be anything, or this could be anything, or this could be anything. Well, there are other group, there are other metals outside group one and two that never need Roman numerals. So that means aside from this and this, what else doesn't need Roman numerals? Gallium is one of them. That's this right here. The other three, don't worry about these metalloids, and don't worry about these. These are don't even exist in large quantities anyway. Um, these are the three that don't need Roman numerals. Silver with a charge of plus one, it's always a plus one, therefore you don't need a Roman numeral. Zinc is a charge of plus two, it's always plus two, therefore you don't need a Roman numeral. Aluminum is plus three, and it's always plus three, so you don't need a Roman numeral. So these ones are the ones right here you got to memorize, don't need a Roman numeral, right here. Other than that, these other transition metal type things, they all do. Again, don't worry about these weird ones, we won't give you any questions about them. All right. Now, for this next section, first of all, uh, explain why each is wrong. Some of one thing's wrong, some of two things or more wrong. But uh, anyway, iron chloride. What's wrong with this? Iron is a transition metal. Iron needs a Roman numeral. It doesn't have a Roman numeral. That's a problem. The capitalization doesn't matter. 
but the spelling's correct and it's just missing a Roman numeral. So, needs a Roman numeral because it has variable charge. So rewrite as a correct formula. It's meant to say name. So rewriting as a correct name means adding a Roman numeral. Now we don't know which one to add. So it could be, at this point, actually technically the answer is not enough information, but if we do specify what the charge is, then if it was a plus one, it would be iron one chloride. If it was a plus two, it would be iron two chloride. So there we go, I just wrote that down. It depends on the charge of the iron. So we actually don't have enough information to answer this question, but here's some examples of what it could potentially look like if we were to, if we'd been told that was a plus two or if we'd been told it was a plus one or whatever. Anyway, for these other ones, uh, same thing's true, but you gotta make sure it's the name we're talking about. Anyway, how many things are wrong with this? Two things. What's wrong with it? Thing number one, silver has a charge of plus one, not plus two. Thing number two, silver doesn't need a Roman numeral. Silver has a charge of plus one always, no Roman numeral needed. So that's what's wrong. It, no Roman numeral, and even if it did need a Roman numeral, that's the wrong Roman numeral anyway. So those are the two things. So the correct formula, or shall I say the correct name, is simply silver iodide. Zinc one sulfide. How many things are wrong with this? Two things are wrong with it. Thing number one, that's the wrong charge. Zinc's a plus two. Thing number two, there shouldn't be a Roman numeral there anyway. So what's wrong with it? There should be no Roman numeral, and it's not a plus one, it's a plus two charge. So the correct name is simply, oops, I suddenly wrote the wrong thing, uh, zinc sulfide. That's it, no Roman numeral. Okay, let's look at some others. Again, we're gonna focus on the correct name in this case, because formula and name are not the same thing. These are names, so we focus on this. So, what's wrong with this? Uh, main thing right there, acetate is not a metal, therefore it does not get a Roman numeral. Roman numerals are only for metals. And metals are always cations, which means they're always on the first thing, never on the second thing. Metals are always cations, and cations always go first. So, uh, you'll notice acetate's not an element anyway. Roman numerals are for, are for an element. So, what's wrong with it? One thing is wrong with it. What's wrong with it? No Roman numeral on the acetate. Correct name? Copper, Roman numeral two, acetate. And that's it. Here, how many things are wrong with this? Two things. One, oxygen is a charge of two, not three. Second of all, oxygen doesn't get a Roman numeral because Roman numerals are for metals only, which means they always go on the cation and oxygen is not a cation. So what's wrong with this? There should be no Roman numeral and that's the wrong charge anyway. So without a Roman numeral, the name is lithium oxide. And that's it. All right, next thing. Uh, let's see, polyatomic ions. Do they go at the beginning or the end of a chemical formula? The cation always goes first in a chemical formula. So if it's positive, that's a cation. Cations always go first. If it's negative, that's an anion. Anions always go last. In other words, at the end. So this the answer is at the end. When do polyatomic ions need to be surrounded by parentheses? If there is more than one. When do they not be, need to be surrounded by parentheses? If there is only one. Examples would be, uh, let's see. Do we have examples here? Yeah, maybe I'll just look for their head. Um, so an example of polyatomic ion, if there's more than one, let's do kind of a little uh, side thing. That means, let's say, mm, calcium and perchlorate. Calcium would stick to two perchlorates. Let's say show there's two perchlorates. Sodium would only stick to one perchlorate. Actually, I was about to put the wrong letter, but oh well, you get the idea. If there's only one perchlorate, 
no parentheses. If there's two perchlorates, there is parentheses. Parentheses only for the polyatomic ion, never for the cation. All right, let's look at examples. Here, sodium nitrate. What's wrong with this? I see one major thing, and that is there should be no parentheses because there's only one. So one major thing, there should be no parentheses because there's only one polyatomic ion. We write as the correct formula, NaNO3. How many things are wrong with this? Two things. One, there's just one of these, no parentheses. Secondly, that's not a polyatomic ion, no parentheses, regardless of how many there are. So what's wrong with it? There should be no parentheses on the silver, and there should be no parentheses if there's just one polyatomic ion. Correct formula? AgClO4. All right, this one. One major thing wrong with it. There should be no parentheses here. That's not a polyatomic ion. Even if there's two, no parentheses. So what that means is, correct formula, Na2CO3. That's it. If there's one carbonate, no parentheses. Doesn't matter how many of these, it's not a polyatomic ion, no parentheses. Here, how many things wrong with this? One major thing. There should be no parentheses because there's only one. So therefore, correct formula, Na3PO4. Finally, here, what's wrong with this? There should be a parentheses. We have to just, I want to show two NH4s. Instead, it's showing one nitrogen and 42 hydrogens. So we need to fix that. I point out that there's one thing wrong. It needs parentheses because there's more than one polyatomic ion. So the correct formula, there's NH4, and there's two of them. So see, there should be a parentheses like right here. Uh, yeah, more or less like that. And then there's only one of this polyatomic ion, so C2O4. And we leave it like that. Okay, now, for these last ones. These rules about Roman numerals do not apply to non-ionic molecular compounds because Roman numerals represent charges and on metals, and molecular compounds do not have metals. Okay, so ions are charged molecules. If it's non-ionic, it doesn't have a charge, which means Roman numerals don't apply regardless of what's there. So you should use Roman numerals. Should you use Roman numerals for non-ionic compounds? No, definitely not. Do not use Roman numerals on non-ionic compounds, which means if you ever see anything that contains all non-metals, that's a non-ionic compound. And if it's a non-ionic compound containing all non-metals, there better be no Roman numerals in there. For some reason, people like putting Roman numerals on silicon. Yeah, you don't want to do that. So the answer here is an emphatic no. Here, NO2 is nitrogen dioxide. NO2 with a one minus charge is the polyatomic ion nitrite. The oops typo. Describe the difference between them. Okay, adding a charge makes it a polyatomic ion. No charge, no polyatomic ion. So if you see this, you treat it as an ion. If you see this with no metals and all non-metals, that makes it a non-anic compound with Greek prefixes. So that's another matter right there. Okay, so NO2 minus the polyatomic ion has a charge, whereas NO2 does not have a charge. That's the difference you should be writing here. And finally, for the last one, I mention this because the non-ionic rules do not apply to polyatomic ions because if it's an ion, it isn't non-ionic. Non-ionic rules do not apply to ions. Therefore, if it is a polyatomic ion, it does not get named by the non-ionic rules. Again, if it's a polyatomic ion, it does not get named by the non-ionic rules. Okay, that's an overview of everything on here. Hopefully that helps. Happy studies.